Welcome into Locked On Phillies. In today's episode, your all inclusive guide to Philadelphia Phillies spring training. Let's get started. <laughs> Are Locked On Phillies, your daily Philadelphia Phillies podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, this is indeed Locked On Phillies. I'm Connor Thomas, your host. Been talking Phil's baseball for years on the radio at 97.5 The Fanatic on television over at NBC Sports Philadelphia. And uh, happy to be here with you as your host of Locked On Phillies. I want to thank you for making Locked On Phillies your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts, YouTube, the Odyssey app, all that good stuff. You know where you can find us. And this episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. Now, we're right around the corner from spring training. Today is Monday, February 6th. Pitchers and catchers report February 16th. We're 10 days away, folks. We're 10 days away. And it feels like it's been a very short offseason for the Philadelphia Phillies. I mean, heck, the Eagles are playing into the, the Super Bowl on the 12th, and four days later, we're going to have Philadelphia Phillies pitchers and catchers working out in Clearwater. We're basically back to that preseason. Uh, you have no time off. If you cover teams like I do for a living, or if you watch teams like we do with passionate fans here in Philadelphia. So, yeah, a quick turnaround for your NL champions, but it's good to know that baseball is coming back because that means the weather's getting warmer. That means we're getting closer to a very exciting 2023 season. All that good stuff that comes with pitchers and catchers reporting. So, I'm going to start by, uh, we're going to go through this little article that MLB.com put up, Todd Zalecki. Uh, talk to Todd every once in a while over on the radio side on 97.5 The Fanatic on chat. Nice guy, Todd. Does great work uh, covering the Philadelphia Phillies for MLB.com. And uh, he put together a nice article about breaking down all the important stuff to know about spring training for your Philadelphia Phillies. So we're going to start with that. Uh, and then I got something special for you for the, uh, for the rest of the episode as well when it comes to spring training. But anyway, well, let's jump in. So pitchers and catchers first report. Uh, February 16th is their first workout. The date of the first full squad workouts when everyone else is down there, February 21st. So we're not that far away from that either. Of course, team's facility is down there in Clearwater, Florida. You know, Clearwater, as Bryce Harper would have on his shirt. It would be Clearwater, W-O-O-D-E-R, how we pronounce water here in Philadelphia, or how some people do. I'm, I'm a South Jersey guy originally, so I don't really have the Philly accent. So I've always said water. But I, uh, but I know, uh, you you get it. We clear Clearwater is awesome. Now I'm gonna start saying Clearwater. Clearwater is great. Uh, I've got something special about that, and I'll tell you why I have a special connection with Clearwater uh, coming up later on in the episode. But it's a great spot down there. The the ballpark is called Bay Care Ballpark, and the practice complex, which is right there as well, is the Carpenter Complex. Uh, fans can go to workouts. That's the next question listed here in the article. Can, can fans attend workouts? Yeah. So they have four different practice fields, uh, I believe four, if I remember correctly, that are set up in kind of like a, a diamond setup. There's like a clubhouse in the middle. And then on either side, there's um, a, like spanning out north, south, east, and west, think like a compass. There's a, a field that faces each direction. And they'll have players pop in between the fields. It's not like there's a lot of room. It's just like one walkway. Think about like, it's very similar to like little league complexes. I'm sure you've seen if you're a baseball parent or if you played the game growing up and the players, they, that's not like they have this underground dugout like they do at citizens bank park where they come up through the dugout and they're never accessible to the fans. Around. No, they like, they walk through the, just the walkways where fans are standing and sitting and they'll be standing right in the dugout and their chain link fences. It's not like they're blocked in, uh, it's not like brick dugouts or anything. So uh, very accessible to see the players. Very cool to be able to, to do that. So, uh, yes, you can go to the workouts. You can watch their spring training practice. Um, don't need to go through that. Uh, who are some new faces? We've talked uh, about the Phillies acquisitions like crazy. And you know what? We'll, we'll go through it anyway. Trey Turner, new, obviously. Uh, Taiwan Walker, Gregory Soto, Craig Kimbrell, and Matt Strom, uh, as well as Josh. I almost said John Harrison. I don't know why. Josh Harrison. Uh, who was our most recent acquisition by the Philadelphia Phillies, uh, signing to a one-year, $2 million deal. 
So Josh Harrison also uh, going to be a part as well. Those guys will all be there. Uh, the top prospects invited to Major League Camp. Uh, we know they had 21 non-roster invitees, but the biggest ones are the three-headed monster of minor league pitchers. Andrew Painter, Nick Abel, and Griff McGarrett. Painter, the number six prospect on MLB Pipeline's uh, most recent list. Uh, Mick Abel, the number 48 prospect. Griff McGarry not listed, but still, he's another interesting prospect down there. Uh, Andrew Painter, a real chance to actually make the opening day roster. We know that. We heard that from Dave Dabrowski last time he talked uh, in public, and we were able to go through that and break that down. You can scroll back down and find my episode where I break down what Dave Dabrowski had to say, but uh, Andrew Painter is going to be the most interesting guy at camp. And that's going to be a really, really interesting position battle between him and Bailey Falter and Christopher Sanchez and Mick Abel and Griff McGarry and all these guys that could potentially be the fifth starter for this team. Or as uh, Rob Thompson and Dave Dombrowski mentioned when they talked to media most recently, a potential six-man rotation at points this season. I think that's hinting towards Painter being up at some point. Everything looks like this kid's the real deal. So that's awesome. Now, there will be some players that will be uh, missing a little bit of time because of the World Baseball Classic. We're going to do a World Baseball Classic episode of Lock on Phillies to talk you through this a little bit more in detail. But here's what you need to know on the base level and how it affects spring training. Uh, Trey Turner, Kyle Schwarber, and JT Romito all going to be competing for Team USA. Bryce Harper was supposed to, obviously, rehabbing from Tommy John, uh, not playing. Taiwan Walker is going to pitch for Mexico. Uh, you got a couple pitchers that may pitch for Venezuela. We're not sure yet, but Ranger Suarez and Jose Alvarado, both eligible to do that. Sir Anthony Dominguez is supposed to pitch for the Dominican Republic. Really, really good team for the Dominican Republic this year. Garrett Stubbs will be competing for Israel. So uh, we're getting a full schedule a little bit later on in the week as we draw closer to the uh, World Baseball Classic, which will be an awesome event. I can't wait for that. That's going to be really exciting, especially since so many Phillies are uh, partaking in it and because Team USA looks to be an absolute wagon of a team this year, a really good chance to win it all. We'll do a full episode on the World Baseball Classic and maybe multiple as results come in and players play and you get to see some of your favorite Phillies in that. But but yes, those guys will miss some time because of that World Baseball Classic, but they'll be playing in games against top competition. It's almost arguably better preparation than um, what these players would be getting if they were just in spring training facing like a random double-A guy. So uh, the first game for the Philadelphia Phillies in spring training, not real game, spring training game, they'll have a split squad game on February 25th against the Yankees at home. Uh, they're doing the St. Patrick's Day game again. Uh, Todd Zalecki made sure to mention that in the article here, March 17th against the Blue Jays, a little split squad game. That's going to be uh, a fun one because they always wear the green caps and uh, people people enjoy it. Uh, the games televised have not yet been released. The broadcast schedule isn't out yet. Some games will be televised, so you'll be able to catch some, but it's select games. It's not every game on NBC Sports Philadelphia here in the area. You'll be able to find a way to get that done. Last game in Florida is uh, March 28th versus the Blue Jays. And no other additional ex. Ex, I almost said expedition. No, exhibition games. Once they're done March 28th, their next game is opening day, which again, of course, Texas Rangers, opening day, March 30th, 4.05 p.m. in Texas. So Philly start on the road this year, which is kind of annoying considering that they're the defending National League champions. I'd love to see them celebrated on opening day at home. I'd love Trey Turner's first hit to come uh, at Citizens Bank Park and all that good stuff. But eh, I, I mean, it's fine. Whatever. We'll see plenty of the Philadelphia Phillies this year. They will still play uh, 81 home games. Plenty of time to catch your fills at the yard. So that's the basic schedule for spring uh, spring, spring training. I can't talk today. Uh, pitchers and catchers reporting on the 16th. Final game is going to be on March 28th. So you have uh, a month and about 12 days, if you call it, call it even. I know February is a short month, so shorter than that. Not a month and 10 days between when pitchers and catchers report to when the team will pack up and head back up here to Philadelphia for their regular season in 2023. Now, coming up next, I want to give you an insider's view of what to do down in Clearwater and how to build your perfect spring training vacation down there for Clearwater and share some of my best memories from a spot that I know pretty well. So we'll discuss coming up as we continue Locked on Phillies. All right, this year, the only app you need at your Super Bowl party is FanDuel. 
America's number one sports book. We're really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America, FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, well, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. You download FanDuel now, you can bet Super Bowl 57 with a no sweat first bet. You get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. And FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line, the point spread, so we'll score a touchdown, the coin toss, the Gatorade, the oh, everything. Go ahead and check it out on uh, FanDuel dot, or FanDuel.com. Their app. You can also do it on FanDuel.com. But the FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe, secure, and super easy to use. Best of all, you can get paid your winnings instantly. So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat. First bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Okay, now why is Clearwater so special to me? Well, allow me to tell you. I'm glad you asked. Uh, it's funny. I've been in the South Jersey, Philadelphia area basically my whole life. I was born in North Carolina, moved up here when I was three because my dad was in the Air Force. He got stationed up here and ended up uh, staying for now the better part of 26 years, 25 years. How old am I? I'm 28. So yeah, better part of 25 years now, quarter of a century I've spent up here. Man, makes me feel old to say that. Anyway, no existential crisis today in the middle of Locked on Phillies, Connor. We talked about this. Uh, but my dad is originally not from North Carolina. He's from Florida. He's from the Pinellas Park area, which is right by Clearwater Beach, right by Tampa Bay. Great area of Florida. Clearwater Beach is awesome. My dad used to go there all the time as a kid. Still have a lot of family down there in the area. And you know what's funny? My aunt and uncle on my dad's side actually lived down there probably about a five-minute walk to the Carpenter Complex and the ballpark down there at, in Clearwater. It's a two-minute drive. It's like a five-minute walk. It's crazy how close they live. So we would go down all the time as kids. And actually – I yeah, give a shout out. Uh, my neighbor, two doors down growing up. Uh, so I, I grew up in South Jersey. One of my, I grew up in two doors down. There were two kids the same age as my brother and I, uh, or like right around the same age. They might be a year older or a year younger or whatever. But we're right around the same age. Grew up playing sports together with them because we were in the same township. Uh, their dad is Steve Novarita, who pitched in the major leagues, who worked in the Phillies minor league system for ages. And always did a bunch of stuff with spring training, always got cool opportunities with them. And every once in a while, we got a chance to uh, to partake as well, just being kids in the neighborhood, always hanging out together and whatever. And some of the coolest things for me is that I used to be able to go down there and they would be out there on the field uh, shagging balls for BP. So I have so many Major League Baseballs uh, from spring training because my next door neighbors would be out there on the field, kids that I grew up with. And they were like, 10 11 years old and i was like 10 or 11 and they'd get the ball and they'd run out to the outfield because you got the grass outfield seats uh not obviously the outfield is grass itself but if you've seen the phillies clearwater uh training facility and their ballpark down there you know that they've got the lawn seats that a lot of people love to sit out on and they would come over and throw the balls up to my brother and i we got a bunch when we go down for spring training we go often because we could make it a family trip and go with my dad and it was great and he could see family and we could see baseball so much fun. So that's why I love Clearwater. And I also know the surrounding area pretty well from being down there for um, for uh, family stuff, obviously. My dad's side of the family all being from that area. And I can give you a, a couple great tips of like things to do while you were down there for spring training, the best way to do it. Uh, first of all, there's no wrong amount of time to go. But I would say you go ahead and you give it a week if you're going to go down there. I know it's a short flight. You can do a three-day, like a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's not hard to get down to the Tampa Bay area. But I think it's best to be able to give yourself enough time to do baseball-adjacent things if you go for the entirety of a week. That way you get a chance to see multiple games. The tough thing is with split squads, sometimes players travel, sometimes players play at home, sometimes players have off day. So it gives you the best opportunity to see the players you want to see. The World Baseball Classic messes with that a little bit this year obviously, and we'll discuss that when we do that episode. But a week always felt like the right amount of time. If you have the ability to take that much time off work, get your kids out of school for that long, well, uh, yeah, unless they're – I wonder if any schools are finished up by the end of spring training. No, we must have gotten taken out of school. Man, my dad was awesome. 
still is, still alive. But anyway, I'd say take a week so that you have a chance to see multiple games in case players travel that you wanted to see or that your kids wanted to see or whatever, and that you can also get a chance to see multiple practices. It's very, very cool to be able to see the way that Major League Spring Training is run, to see the players, to be real close to them, to hear what they're talking about, to hear the chatter. Like, I get the opportunity because I'm a credentialed media member uh, to go down for batting practice at Citizens Bank Park. And if you have never gone, obviously that's much harder to do, but if you've never gone to Clearwater, you don't know the experience of being eye level face to face with guys while they're taking batting practice and while they're going through their drills and everything. There's one thing that I'll never get over. And I played baseball at a relatively high level. I played college ball. I played semi-pro ball. The way the ball comes off these guys' bats during batting practice is incredible to watch from the stands, and it's even more incredible up front. You know, it's kind of like, uh, and I've gotten to experience this only one time, but if you go to an NBA game and you're watching from like the upper decks, it's cool. You're watching basketball. If you watch from floor level, you can, that's the only way to truly appreciate how fast these guys are, how athletic these guys are, how big they are. It's unbelievably different the closer you get. That's kind of what baseball batting practice is and watching spring training from that close. It's awesome. It would literally be like going to your kid's little league game, sitting in the stands because they have stands just like it's a little league complex and watching major leaguers play as close as you watch your kids play. It's awesome. So, You want to be able to do practice as well. Don't just go down there for the games. Go down there for practice. Also, you really definitely want to go to Clearwater Beach. It's a beautiful beach. They got a nice little strip of bars and restaurants right down there on the beach. The weather's always wonderful. If it's raining one day, it'll be gone in 15 minutes. Uh, Love the weather down there. And that's just Florida in general. But if you've never traveled, uh, you know, pack shorts, pack a bathing suit. It'll be warm enough to go to the beach. And you can go ahead and check that out. And that'll be like later on. Normally, the weather really breaks in March. But you'll be down there in March if you take a little bit later of a spring training trip. So go ahead and do that. Outside of that, really, uh, there's a couple other cool things. If you go to Tampa, uh, in Tampa Bay, it's not far. It's about a 20, 25-minute drive to get over there. Some good fishing spots if you enjoy fishing. Uh, if you want to spend a day doing that uh, after practice, before practice, if you want to wake up early for the Philadelphia Phillies. But the thing with spring training, while it is somewhat a routine, if you go for a week, you're not going to see the same thing really multiple times. You're going to see live at bats uh, as far as like throwing and practice and stuff like that if you go earlier, but it'll be different players. It'll be different pitcher matchups. They rotate through and everything. So something you see at practice one day might miss the next. Uh, the complex, they're hitting home runs left and right. They're hitting them into the parking lot. So a lot of baseballs to be had if you collect foul balls or never got a chance to catch a home run. Uh, you got to, you have to, you have to, you have to go to a game uh, at the Phillies home stadium, the Baycare uh, Park, and you have to go to Frenchies in left field. Awesome. The straw roof or like the, um, it's not straw, but it's like uh, palm branches almost. You, you get what I mean. It's like, stitched together roof of like the uh, palm leaves is the best way to describe it. It's just one of the best places in the world watching spring training baseball, beautiful clear water, Florida, uh, nice beverage in your hand, something cold, maybe a margarita, something like that. If that's your, uh, your cup of tea, you got to have Frenchies. You got to sit in the lawn seats out in center field for a couple of innings as well. Don't just sit in the regular seats, move around a little bit, see the ballpark. It really is a really nice facility. So uh, that's, it's not a complicated trip. And the other thing is it's not going to cost you too much money. It's not expensive to go to those games for spring training. Uh, it's not a, an expensive state in general, Florida, when it comes to being able to, I don't know, eat, go out to eat. It's like a, it's a tourist spot. And they don't really uh, – Clearwater is not Miami where you're dropping a million dollars on something. No, it's it's a very family-friendly, fun place. Uh, love going down there every time I get a chance to. And, yeah, that's uh, those are my recommendations as we – Head closer to spring training for putting together your ultimate spring training uh, vacation trip. So remember, go for a week, catch multiple games in case teams are split squad and some of your players that you want to see are not with the home team right then. Make sure they have home games, of course, during the time you're there. Go to practices as well. See the beach, see the area because it's a really, really nice area. 
And, uh, yeah, live it up if you do get a chance to go down to spring training. Coming up as we wrap up Locked On Phillies, I'm going to just talk to you a little bit about the schedule and how spring training will affect Locked On Phillies coming up uh, with our production. We'll talk about it as we wrap up uh, Locked On Phillies. First, though, let me tell you about my friends over at Built Bar. Maybe you're looking for a delicious treat, but you don't want all of the fat and calories. Who does? Well, then you got to go grab a Built Bar. They're awesome. Just got through the holidays. Everyone's trying to eat better. I'm trying to eat better. You're trying to eat better. Trying to stay in shape. Beach season, I know it doesn't feel like it, but it's right around the corner. Days are getting longer, getting a little warmer out, uh, hopefully, uh, by the end of this month that we're in, in February now. Once you get to March, that's go time for getting in shape for the summer, and you don't want to be behind the eight ball. So when you go for a snack, I mean, they're covered in 100% real chocolate, so they taste amazing. Listen to some of these flavors. Churro, peanut butter brownie, coconut almond, cookies and cream, double chocolate, coconut puffs. They have the puffs, which have marshmallow. And Bilt Bar's awesome, and you don't have to wait around and order them anymore. Now you can go to your local Walmart in the pharmacy section. You can pick up a box, or you can go to Sam's Club, get them in bulk, and grab a 13-bar box with some of those hit flavors I was just telling you about. Go ahead and check out Bilt Bar. They're absolutely amazing. Thank me later. All right, so our upcoming schedule for Locked On Phillies. Yes, we're going back to five days a week starting when spring training starts and when pitchers and catchers report. So with the 16th being when pitchers and catchers report, uh, day of the week, I don't know, why do I not off the top of my head know that? Uh, the 16th is a Thursday. So starting the week of the 20th, we will be back to five days a week. So you'll have daily episodes. I know I've been uh, trying to get – uh, closer to four a week done than three, even though we're normally three a week during the off season. Uh, but yeah, we're going back to five a week. So you will have your full-time locked on Phillies from then until when the Philadelphia Philly season ends and a, a little bit after as well. So we're ready to get rolling again. And again, it feels like a short off season for me. I'm sure it feels like a short off season for you. And that's a good thing because the Philadelphia Phillies are a team to look forward to. So yes, you'll be getting a lot more, Locked on Phillies content, a lot of information for spring training. I'm going to go ahead and start getting some interviews this year as well. I wanted to go ahead. I had plenty of stuff to talk about this past season, this past year, because, hey, the Phillies went on a great run. It was my first year doing this. And now I, I do have connections with some media members, with some former players of the Philadelphia Phillies, some, some folks that we're going to be able to get on here. Uh, hopefully to do some interviews for Locked On Phillies. So that'll be coming this season as well. So a lot of fun, interesting stuff that will start to roll out as spring training goes along. But the most important information right now, coming up the week of the 20th, we go back to five episodes a week. So you'll be getting even more Locked On Phillies content. You know what that means? You got to subscribe. You got to subscribe to Locked On Phillies so you don't miss any of it. You don't want to miss one of these great episodes and some pertinent information and some breaking news and all that good stuff. So go ahead and subscribe on YouTube. Uh, go ahead and give us a like, a rate, a review, wherever you get your podcast, whether that's Spotify, Apple Music, the Odyssey app, all that good stuff. I want to thank you for making Locked On Phillies your first listen every day, as I know you do. Now make your second listen, Locked On MLB Prospects. Lindsey Crosby does absolutely amazing work for them. A lot of prospect news as of late, as there always is heading into spring training, who's going, who has a chance to make a major league roster, Going to be so much great stuff throughout spring training from Lindsey Crosby. Going to do a crossover with him at some point coming up about the Phillies. I know he's put out some information on the Phillies minor leaguers already, though, so go ahead and check that out. Check out Lindsey Crosby's work on Locked On MLB Prospects. It's available wherever you get your podcasts, YouTube, Odyssey app, all the same places you can find Locked On Phillies. That's all for today's episode. Again, I appreciate everyone following along, subscribing, rating, reviewing, doing all that great stuff. It really helps me out. And, hey, another day closer to pitchers and catchers reporting and baseball, not in Philadelphia, but in Clearwater. It'll be fun. I'll talk to you next time on the next episode of Locked on Phillies.